What is good, YouTube? Quinn Wade Basketball Analysis coming to you on a quick video. I wanted to let you guys know I got some new merchandise available, not just t-shirt anymore. I got different type of t-shirts, different type of shirts and logo that you can purchase on my spread shirt and also hoodies now. We have expanded and added more to the channel and more merchandise for the brand. Thanks for supporting. It will be in the description and the links will be in the comment section below. Thanks for helping me and supporting the movement. Quinn Wade Basketball Analysis. I'm going to check out the video. What is good, YouTube? Quinn Wade Basketball Analysis coming to you the video. We're going to talk about Ja Morant and the Memphis Grizzlies. Ja Morant is averaging 20 points per game. The only big surprise about John Moran is that he's not facilitating the way we thought he would. He came in as an elite passer into the NBA. And when you look at him, he's very little, very small, but he's lightning quick. And you have to be some type of athlete to really make an impact on the game. And he's a legitimate 6'3", 174. And the guy is only 20 years old. He won't turn 21 into the beginning of the next season almost in August. And the guy has been phenomenal. He has been amazing in only 27 minutes. He's shooting 15 shots a game. He's shooting 52% from the field, 50% from three, even though he's not taking that many. He's only taking 1.7. He's shooting 75% from the free throw line, three rebounds, five assists, and 20.4 points. The only problem is he is getting 4.3 turnovers per game, and he's averaging 1.3 steals. So he's using his speed and his athleticism to his advantage, but he's also uh, very, very unselfish. I know that he's getting a lot of turnovers. I know that he's not averaging the most assists, but I wanted to see that aggressiveness out of John Morant. I wanted to see that attack mentality from him, and I'm glad that I'm starting to see it because this is a guy – that can take over whenever he feels like. And, I, and the thing that's funny about John Morant, he's having success in the NBA. He has come and shown that he has been NBA ready. A lot of people feel like he was the second best player. A lot of people feel like you can't pass up on him because how high his upside is and the fact that Mike Conley is getting older. Um, Kobe White don't have the upside of a job ja Morant to certain people. And when you put together his speed and his handle and his ability to have a good IQ of where to be on the court and where his teammates are and how to get to his spots, the only thing that he continues to get a lot of trouble for is basically turning the ball over when he's going up into the air, getting blocked or going up to the air to get a finish, or he's trying to force in a pass. It has really, you know, hurt him assist to turnover ratio wise but it's just about figuring it out the guy hasn't played a whole season he hasn't even played 10 games so it's going to be a process of slowing the game down making the right plays playing at your own pace and making sure you keep your teammates involved which he has shown to be able to do and another thing that has hurt his assist is the fact that they got dylan brooks and other guys that like to bring up the ball and handle the ball and let him play off the ball which means the ball is less in his hands. I know he has a lot of touches, but getting less minutes and getting less opportunities and not having the greatest players around you, I think that that's one thing of why he hasn't had the impact as a cis guy like he did in college. Even though he didn't have the greatest teammates in college, the system was more predicated on John Morant doing everything and finding ways to use his, his skill set and his talent to make his teammates around him get easier shots. And in the NBA, it's not like that because you have a team where they have players that can actually play and create their own shot, and they don't really need John Morant to set all of them, them up, even though he does have guys like Jonas Valanciunas that can get the ball and knock down floaters and push shots and get dunks and rim run. You got Jaron Jackson that can do the same and also play some five and also knock down spot up threes and mid ranges. But Jaron Jackson game hasn't evolved, evolved enough consistently to where he can knock down mid range and threes. But when you look at majority of his roster, like Kyle Anderson and guys like John Moran and Dylan Brooks, he only can do so much offensively when it comes to facilitating because he don't have that ball in his hand. And a lot of other guys are not fully developed and not real offensive threats that teams are really worried about or feel like they can really kill them in a game. And this team is very young. 
and they also do have some veterans that have proven some things. But at the same time, we look at this team as a team that's going to be bad for a couple years. But they do have a great foundation with John Moran and Jaron Jackson, guys that can even be potential two-way players at their position. But I really want to see how they finish putting this roster together. Um, they had a good, great run with the great and grind Grizzlies, but it never really gave them a finals appearance. So they're going more fun, more athletic, more mobile, more modern. And I think that's important because they was a little bit behind with the Mike Conley, Marcus All as they try to revolutionize the team and move more to a shooting team. They were just too old and they just couldn't keep up defensively and offensively with the talent that was in the Western Conference, and that's why they stumbled the last couple of years. And injuries didn't really help either. But I think this year is going to be so great for John Morant because he has got off to a great start. He knows his shots. He knows how to attack the defense. And I think that that's very, very good for a player that you really didn't know how he was going to translate because he came from college. But his game has proven so far in these seven games that he can literally be a legitimate starter and he legitimately is going to be a star in this in the NBA. And he has the work ethic. He has shown time and time again that he's going to continue to work and improve his game. He has shown that in high school. He has shown that throughout college, that he's a guy that's never settling. He's always trying to push himself. He's always trying to get the best out of his body and out of his skill set. And that's the recipe for success. And that's the type of guy that you do want on your team, especially when you have that void on the team coming into the NBA draft. So they got the big man rotation figured out. I think they need a little bit more shooting and more guys that's legitimately threats from the three-point line. And that opened up the game for John Morant to really get to his mid-range, get to his floaters, and get to the basket more consistently. But he's been doing it. It's just about continuing to find ways to make his job easier so he can make his teammates' job easier. But but what I've been seeing so far from John Moran, I am highly impressed that he has been able to stay efficient from the field and from three, and he has been able to get, get to the free throw line and knock him down. But the fact that he has literally shown that he can score whenever he wants and however he wants, I thought that was something that I was surprised about because, like I said, he is only 174 pounds. He is a legitimate 6'3", but the problem is he wasn't a great shooter in high, in college or – in, in in high school he was a solid shooter he was respectable but he wasn't a guy that you thought was he was gonna have to game plan for when it comes to shooting but other than that he has pretty much proven that he should have been the number two pick and i like the fact that the the younger players are coming in and contributing right away they're not guys that have to sit the bench or they're guys that ain't gonna get that much playing time these are guys that have actually gotten the minutes and have gave you production and i think that's what you want out of a number two pick you want a guy that can be a starter right away that's prepared to play that has potential to impact the game and john Morant has won them games and has helped them save games and he has also put them in positions to where they can steal games and that's what the all-star and the star will do can he get to that superstar level can he bulk up get stronger and continue to work on this game to the point where he becomes unguardable, but also a elite playmaker at the NBA level. He was at in college, he was. But he has to do it all over again at the NBA level. And I think he wants that challenge, and I think he, he looks forward to that. And I ain't going to do anything but motivate him to strive and continue to do better. And if that's the case on the Memphis Grizzlies, I'm not complaining because that's what I want in my point guard. That's what I want in my franchise player. And he's one of their franchise players and one of their cornerstones. And it is good to see him produce and give them solid production right out of the gate. And I didn't see him being able to translate this good so far. And I think that it will continue, but I just want to see what he's going to add to his game over the next couple years that can really take him to another level and become a superstar player like a lot of the people thought and think he can be. I see a lot of things that's great. I don't really know if he can be elite in those other areas, but if he does, it's only going to make his value higher and it's only going to make him a better player. And if it does, that's just better for the Grizzlies because now you get a great player and that's what you want out of number two pick. But let me know what you guys think about John Morant. Do you think he's a, the, or the rookie of the year? Do you think that he has lived up to the hype? Do you think he was better than you thought he would be? Do you think that, you know, this guy 
is going to be a superstar because I didn't think he was going to be this good on the NBA level right now. But I don't really see his game taking a big hit because he knows what he is and he knows what he can and he can do. And he understands how to get to his spots and he understands how to play the game. He has a high IQ, like I said before, and that's only going to help him further in his career and throughout this season. So he might hit a rookie wall, but the way he has been playing, it looks like it might not. And if he get that jump shot going from three and from mid-range, he can be very, very dangerous in the pick and roll and in the open court, but also in the half court. And that's something that I want to see him do to really push his game to the next level. Let me know what you guys think, though, in the comment section below. Like this video, check out my older videos on my channel. I have many playlists. I break down rookies. I break down players. I break down summer league. I do cover the draft, and I got a mock draft up already. Not only that, I do podcasts, and I also talk about the game of basketball, whether it comes to summer league, free agency, trade deadline, buyouts, and also I cover top 10 discussions and stuff like that. So you like this type of video, you like the NBA, check out my older videos and my playlists. I enjoy making these videos. You guys enjoy watching. I'm 